Safety tab. Warning, the following is intended for edutain informational purposes only. Outstanding decision hand, welcome back for another hot shot of safety with Safety Time, the only YouTube channel dedicated to helping you get the job done right while maintaining 100% of your body part inventory. Today is a very important addition to our curriculum as we kick off part one of the rotational math series. So without further ado, let's get on with the lesson. Ah yes, the angle grinder. There are scant instruments in your tool repository that can match the angle grinder for its tenacity and grit. Which is why in 2015 alone over 750,000 people lost one or both of their opposable thumbs in an angle grinder related incident. But fear not hand, for today we will discuss a bevy of methods that you can employ to help navigate the menagerie of hazards associated with the grinding of metal. Starting with protection. So, if you're planning on using that angle grinder, you probably want to consider a little personal protective equipment. PPE for the uninitiated. So let's start with the PPE most pertinent to the safety time mission statement, gloves. Now when it comes to gloves, it's important that you choose the right type for the job. And for grinding, you're going to want nice fitted leather gloves or gloves with leather padding. No, no, not... Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Oh wow, those are kind of actually pretty awesome. Now, if you're worried that your gloves are going to get tangled up in the wheel while it's spinning, both your hands should be on the angle grinder. And safety time pro tip, none of those hands should be on the wheel. And if you think that they should, the tool you're actually looking for is a fingernail file. You're in the wrong video. Get out of here. Next up, you're going to want to protect your money maker. Now, if you're a long hair individual, you're going to want to go ahead and tie that on up before you begin any job involving a rotating element. Oh, it's coming. Ah! He won't, he won't. All right, now that we've got those ponytails and man buns done up, it's time to protect that face. Oh man, and you're probably not going to like it, because according to Table E1 in OSHA 1926.102A5, you gotta wear face and eye protection. Now I know you're probably sitting there like, what do I look like, some kind of nerd? NERD! Seriously though, just do it, because even though you were being very smart when you bought those cobalt safety glasses when you picked the grinder up, it's not gonna do the whole job. And trust me, a little flaming hot metal flake in the eye will humble you. <laughs> And similarly, a face shield is also not enough to protect you from an exploding disc if it were to happen. And these are your eyeballs we're talking about, so we're going to do what we can to protect them. And let me guess, you're probably going to put the glasses on while you're inside in the air conditioning and then walk out to your garage and they're going to fog up immediately so you take them off. And then while you're grinding, your breath fogs up the face shield so you raise it up or just take the thing off altogether. And then... And now there's you laying on the floor about to be taken to the hospital where you could go, oh my god! How come the hospital staff didn't take his sweater off? Seriously, this is, this is probably the least fun I've had so far in the editing of this video, looking at these pictures. Oh, hey, guy. That, that healed well. Last up is earplugs. Eh, you don't have to go crazy with the ear protection. Just get some plugs, they'll do the trick. But, safety time pro tip. Clean your ears out before you insert the plugs. You nasty. Okay, so before we get started, we need to review a couple things. Number one, are you a penny pension cheapskate? Because while saving money might be good when you're purchasing textiles for your children's return to school each year, it is not so good when you're talking about buying a device with motor windings. Next up is that thing. That thing is important. 
leave that thing on. And if you think you need to take that thing off because you can't immediately tell why it's important in the protection of your well-being, you might not need your very own personal angle grinder. What you need is Angie's List. And don't worry, this guy's not American, so that's not actually the bird he's flipping. He's just using that finger to point. Um, it'll, it'll throw sparks in your, in your direction. So. All right, now it's time to inspect that wheel, starting with the most obvious thing, and we're going to want to check for any cracks, chips, or other damage. Now, after that, you need to make sure that you got the right RPM rating for a very obvious reason. It's a basic workman's principle that any spinning object wants to explode if the right configuration of elements are present. But you, the safety-minded individual, are going to check the RPM rating on your disc and know the max RPM of the angle grinder you're using, thus preventing such a configuration of hazardous elements. Next, you need to make sure you got the right disc for the job you're trying to do. Don't use a grinding wheel to cut and absolutely do not use a cutoff wheel to grind. That little thin disc is not meant to be loaded from the side and it's just going to blow up in your face and deaf you. And if you won't use the right disc for the sake of your own personal preservation, do it because someone might walk in and see you. And there's nothing more embarrassing than getting caught using equipment improperly. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. Lastly, and for the love of God, don't grind aluminum with the wheels that came with your angle grinder. They're not the right type. It's a special wheel. Now you're probably sitting there at your computer holding an angle grinder in one hand and an aluminum baseball bat in the other, planning on doing God knows what today. But if you're going to be a hard head and power through the job anyways, throw that wheel out when you're done. Because the aluminum soaks in, and this is bad for two reasons. One, when you're finally getting around to working on the old project tractor, that aluminum soaked wheel, plus heat, plus the rust off the project, it's going to create a little hell you known as thermate, a not-so-distant cousin of thermite. And what does that mean for you? Burn the whole barn down. Second, and this one might be a little bit more obvious, but the aluminum-soaked wheel itself is integrally compromised. In fact, a wheel soaked with anything is integrally compromised. So chunk it. Alright, you got all your PPE on and your grinder's all set to go. Now it's just time to go ham on it! Yeah! Whoa! What just got into you all of a sudden? Chill! You're just grinding metal! Come on, ease down! Ease down! You're gonna sit there and overdo the pressure on that thing. You're gonna burn up your disc in about a half a minute and look as inept as a toddler talking on a playphone. <laughs> Now what you're looking for is a nice smooth motion with a focus placed on a nice even pressure throughout the stroke. You'll probably notice at first that you have a tendency to bear down a little too hard on your forward stroke which can cause the wheel to glaze over. And on your return stroke you'll probably have a tendency to run it a bit too light causing the wheel to skip. Neither of these conditions are optimal so just take it slow until you get it figured out. Alright, so you're grinding now, you're starting to feel a little bit comfortable, but there's still a lot going on that you need to be aware of. Namely, the sparks you're shooting out. And even though you're very focused on the work happening at the wheel, you also need to keep an eye on where you're shooting your- Oh my god, seriously? Oh man, if it's about to get stupid, I'm probably about to need a little backup. I bet you, Carl. I go ahead. Hey man, what's your 20? It's your way. Oh yeah. It's hot work time, baby. No doubt. No doubt. Look, folks, couldn't be easier. Check your line of fire and make sure all flammable's out of the area. Now let's have a look here. Oh, wow, good job. There you go, directing your fire right on the mantle. Way to go, hand. You almost cratered it. I like that personal protective equipment. You're lucky you still got your face. Hot work time pro tip. Humans are flammable too. The operator is as well. All right, so this is a video uh, for Juver and Rangers IRC. He wants to know what happens when you angle grind a uh, ferrocium rod. Uh -huh. This might be a bad idea. You are about to grind a fire starter in your house. You might want to rethink this. I'm not a smart man.
At least get the beer out of there before you burn the house down. I'd like to see this pre-job safety briefing. Seriously, what's the job? Bath towels are not acceptable in the hot work area. No doubt. I bet the missus is gonna be happy when she sees what you did with this bath towel set. It's all right if you can't afford gloves. Just go ahead and buy the bench grinder. Ooh, Lord. Keep both hands on the tool. If you're not welding, you're grinding. You don't need a welding hood, you need a grinding shield. I don't think this guy knows what he's doing at all. All right, Hen, that's all you're getting out of me today. Like and subscribe if you value your well-being. Go with safety, my children.